Hello, um, my name is Jan Erickson. I'm Government Relations Director for the National Organization for Women. I would like to uh, convey a, um, a regret from our President, Tony Van Pelt, who uh, has a conflict um, today, but hopefully she can uh, come to a future meeting and, and share a few thoughts. Um, in regards to, uh, and I'll make this very quickly because I know time is of the essence here, uh, that manner of bunny of always smiling is so important for feminists because the work we do is so hard and we encounter so much negativism. It is delightful to have somebody among us who is always smiling and, is, and conveys a feeling of love and support and that was bunny. Uh, I'll try to get through my notes very quickly. I have just a few short comments. Uh, some of you may know several years during the Nixon and Ford administrations uh, regulations were passed implementing Title IX. Uh, they dragged on for a number of years and uh, Bunny uh, Sandler did play an important role in drafting key parts of those regulations so we have her to thank for that and hopefully she moved the process along because there is was then and is now a suspicion that uh, those administrations really were foot dragging. Mm -hmm. The Feminist Chronicles 1953 to 1993, which is available by the way uh, for download from the uh, Feminist Majority Foundation's website, chronicles this history and they have a timeline uh, of the birth and the growth of the second wave of, fem of the fem modern feminist movement. Um, a fo there is a focus in Feminist Chronicles of the advocacy of the National Organization for Women, and uh, information um, in it notes that in 1975 there was a meeting at the uh, Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, as it was then called, with Secretary Casper Weinberger, who met with 13 national women's organizations, including now Legal Defense and Education Fund's Peer Project, which looked at issues concerning <coughs> equality in education. Uh, Weinberger suggested that he preferred to leave the final Title IX implementation, the regulation decisions, to the, uh, to the courts, and implied that once these regulations were issued, HEW would avoid making policy decisions, decisions in order not to prejudge these court cases. Well, in February, these um, 13 women's organizations uh, sent the secretary a letter uh, charging his department with clear abdication of HEW's legal responsibility to enforce Title IX, uh, maintaining that the statute directed the executive departments providing federal education aid, not the courts, to enforce the law. So that was January of that year, 1975, uh, three years after the passage of Title IX. Then that February, Title IX regulations barring sex discrimination and intercollegiate athletics and broadening opportunities for girls and women in education were signed by, were released and were signed by Secretary Weinberger and sent to President Gerald Ford for a signature. Uh, the meeting with the 13 women's organizations, including now Legal Defense and Education Fund, perhaps made a difference in, <coughs> and I'm personally thinking that Yes, it made a key difference yeah, so. uh, in getting those regulations finally moving. If Bunny were here with us today, I'm sure that she would have many stories to tell about that process. Um, and perhaps she has even written about those. I certainly haven't read everything that Bunny has written. She was just a prodigious author. Um, now suggest, following that, now suggested that a coalition be formed in 1976 and that was the National Coalition of Women and Girls in Education. We're still meeting today, uh, 43 years later, and unfortunately, maybe carrying on some of the same battles. Um, Title IX, as many of you know, is facing a serious challenge with the regulations that the Trump administration is proposing concerning sexual harassment. Um, comments, by the way, are due at, on the 30th of this month. They gave us two extra days. Um, <laughs> Uh, from the original deadline of the 28th, yeah. uh, proposing um, regulations which essentially remove responsibility from colleges, universities, and schools mm -hmm. to respond to complaints of sexual harassment. What these regulations are proposing is that any incident which occurs off campus does not have to be addressed by school authorities. And uh, uh, 
we know that it that there is an option for schools <coughs> to uh, take on that responsibility but I'm uh, being more of a cynic <laughs> thinking that a lot of schools won't do that 87% of college students live off campus which was a statistic that really surprised me and that means the vast majority of students may have little recourse if their school chooses not to implement Title IX, their understanding of Title IX. Um, this part of Title IX, a civil rights law, was intended to counter the widespread harassment and even assault that women experienced, many, many women students, and which was often swept under the proverbial rug. If the incident was severe and the school failed to take action or worse, protect, protected the perpetrator, which as we know happened a lot, the woman, the woman just often dropped out of school. The proposed regulations, if the, that is the Trump administration regulations, would return women and girls to those days when educational institutions failed to protect them and protect their educational uh, future. I'm sure that Benny Sandler uh, was very saddened to see these regulations proposed. I, so maybe some of you here spoke with Bunny about this and um, hopefully uh, when uh, we have a new administration we will work like crazy to get all of these regulations and maybe even better ones restored uh, and we can hopefully begin on that work in 2021. So in the spirit of Bunny Sandler I'm sure that we will all be working on getting this done and uh, Bunny will be smiling all along the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.